Hello everyone, welcome to Beginner's Java. This is going to be episode number seven. I apologize if the video is a little small. I made the, uh, the selection box really small this time uh, when I was selecting the region, so I hope that uh, it's not detrimental in any way. Um, moving on from that, we're going to be talking about nested if statements. This is going to be another quick lesson, so I hope I'm not moving too fast for anyone. Um, we are mostly going to avoid nested if statements. They get really complicated and they don't really offer us too much in the way of functionality. Um, I mean, it's, it's fine if you want to use them in your own code. I just, I try to avoid them as much as possible, which doesn't stop them from coming up time to time in my code, but it's just easiest to read code if you don't get into them at all. So. Let's take a few numbers here. Let's take a uh, num1, uh, need to make that an int. Uh, no, you know what, let's make it a double. Uh, num1 equals, we'll just do 27.5, right? And let's do uh, another variable here called tax rate. And we'll set that equal to zero. Okay. So. Let's start off by making an if statement and say if num1 is greater than 0, uh, well, we won't do anything there yet. Let's put in an else statement down here. We'll skip a line just to make things look a little cleaner. Um, and then we'll say if num1 is greater than five, we're going to do something else. And so then in here, let's do a if num1 is greater than 10. We're going to keep building, increasing every time by five. num1 is greater than 15. If num1 is greater than 20. Missed my, uh, missed my parentheses there. If num1 is greater than 25, and lastly, let's make, um, and I missed a closing bracket there, and let's say if num1 is greater than 30. So, with our brackets existing as they do now, we realize that it should happen in between 20 and 25. So let's simply do something like this. Let's do system.out.println, and we're going to say greater than 30. And then let's set the tax rate equal to I don't know, 35, and we'll just pretend that that's percent. And let's just copy this down the whole way, so you guys can sort of get a sense of how code starts to get a little crammed up. And so let's set our tax rate equal to 30, and we'll go down again. And so you can see that I'm, I'm lining these up downwards. Uh, so in this case, that's 30, 25. And I'm actually not lining them up properly. They should be lining up like this. So that makes a bit more sense. Yeah, they should be lining up with what's below them like that. So Okay, and so that's greater than 10. And so we'll make that a 15% uh, tax rate. And so in case you couldn't tell what I'm trying to get to here is that this becomes very complicated very fast. And so we'll do greater than zero as this last one. And we'll set the tax rate five down here we'll say system dot out dot println income or well we'll say greater 
and then what was it 30 uh, oh no no it would have to be less than because we used a, a catch so let's do greater than 25 and less than or and num1 is less than 30 so let's do like that so we'll say between 25 and and 29.99 repeating and we'll say that this is going to be greater than 30 and let's do tax rate equals 50 okay so that's our basic structure for this program now that should look ugly to you uh, I mean if, if we wanted to look quickly at what num1 or, or if it's between 5 and 10, we're going to have to look right here. And then we'll come down here and say, oh, greater than 5, it's equal to 10. So if we give this a run, you're going to realize that we also hit every single one of those on the way up. Because it's greater than 5, it's greater than 10, it's greater than 15, it's greater than 20. So then we have to add qualifiers in each of these. So we go and num1 is less than 5 and then you go all the way up like this. You say and num1 is less than 10. And you keep going up like that over and over and over again. And num1 is less than 15. And so I'm just going to give that a save and, and run it again. Just so you guys can see. And now it says it's greater than 30. And so now we're kind of left wondering, wait, why does it think it's over 30? And the answer is a little tricky. So let's take this time to do something interesting and see why it thinks it's over 30. Because right here, it hits this if, and that if is not true anymore. So now that if is going to jump it down directly to here. So this becomes tricky because now we need to get into what's called a break statement. And what a break statement does is it says, hey, if you're inside of anything else, don't print anything out. Uh, or, well, not even don't print anything out. It's get out of there. So let's do it like this. We'll do break and break. Oh, wait, actually, I'm not in a loop. Uh, and it's not a switch. So actually we can't even use a break on this. We can't use a break on a simple if, I forgot. Um, so in this case, what we would need to do is actually even more difficult. Um, so let's go ahead and do this the easiest, easiest, easiest way. So we have to stop and think about what we're testing. Now if this is false, then it's going to jump straight down to that if. That's not good. So that means to be true, this has to go over to here. The only problem with that is that when it gets down to this area, it's going to say, oh, well, it's greater than this. So that brings up an interesting point. When you're testing like this, you always have to test for your highest value first because otherwise each one of these is going to be true 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 false or actually no this one's true as well um, I forgot that I changed that to being uh, 25 and 30 and not just 30 so it becomes one of those things where then we'd have to go back through and we'd have to change it to less than 30 and greater than 25 and so this will make it hit and hit only one. So that way we'll again do 20, uh, 25, and uh, greater than 20, or less than 25 and greater than 20. So you can see how this gets really complicated. Um, we end up with all these variables flowing around, and I'm just going to execute that because uh, it's actually going to hit a bunch of these because I didn't change around the way that they work. But 
at this point it says greater than zero, which means that it's only hit this one, which is what I was hoping it would do. Um, because this one evaluates to false and then it skips all the inner ones. So you can see why using these is just, it's going to be a headache. It's really going to be just a big waste of time, and if you can avoid it using other statements, then I highly recommend doing it that way. Um, I'm going to leave this off here just with a cautionary note of saying um, there are times in programming when a complex if statement might be the best way to do things. It happens. It really does happen. I have a program where I use I don't know, like 40 if statements in about 100 lines of code, and it drives me insane, but I know it's the easiest way to do it. So unfortunately, you will end up with times where you have to use this, but if you find yourself doing this a lot, then you might want to stop and rethink how you're structuring your program. And as you start to program more, you'll gain more tools and sort of understand a bit better why not to do this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up this code and I'm going to put this out for you guys and you guys can take a look at it, learn from it, and then never do what I've shown you here. Okay, I'm going to leave that just like this. Sorry it came in a little longer than I would have liked it to, um, but you did learn some, some good lessons by this, I hope. Uh, my name is Damien. Happy holidays. It's uh, almost Christmas Eve now. Uh, I will see. Almost Christmas Eve. Uh, and I will see you guys again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.